Next up, after many tough weeks for local restaurants turned upside down by coronavirus closures, a small bright spot. More than a dozen chefs, bakers, businesses, and food writers in the Boston area have been nominated for James Beard Awards, the Oscars of the restaurant world, including two terrific people up for Best Chef in the Northeast, Cassie Puma of Sarma and Somerville and Tiffany Faison, who joins me now. Tiffany's nominated for the latest addition to the Fenway Food Empire of hers, Orfano. She also owns Tiger Mama, Sweet Cheeks, and Fool's Erin. Good to see you, Tiffany. Really nice to see you, Jim. How are you? Good. So a small bright light in a sea of bad news. Congratulations on that bright light. But how is your non-beard state of mind after six, seven, or eight weeks of this? Uh, It's tough. It's really tough. We're in a place where things are scary and we are, there's a weird dichotomy of like trying to figure out this push to open and also trying to do the right thing in terms of staying healthy and Um, making sure we're doing right by our staff and our team. Um, And, you know, no one knows the answer of whether getting open sooner is more prudent or being smarter and staying closed a little longer makes more sense, both, you know, morally, financially, and ethically. Like, there's just no, and and, and in terms of our health, just our just general health, there's pillars that you're trying to negotiate around, and there's no clear answer. How precarious is the state of the business? I mean, your ascendancy was huge. I think we learned, one of my coworkers was speaking to you, you applied for one of those PPP, the small business, well, several. You got Mm -hmm. one, I think, for one of your restaurants. You're waiting on the other two. But that's essentially to be able to have that forgiven. You've got to pay workers at that restaurant for not working while you're closed, which doesn't really help help you when you get into the new environment when you are able to open. Is that a fair statement? It's a fair statement. And, you know, it's as, as grateful as I am for the government actually giving us funds and allocating them properly this time, it seems to be happening. You know, it seems like we're running 100 miles an hour into a brick wall. And so how many times are we going to do this until it's like there's no more money and now it's actually time to open and it would be safe? What happens then? How stressful is this? I mean, I don't, you know, you're one of the restaurateurs with whom I speak fairly regularly who almost doesn't finish a sentence without talking about the people who work for you. What, how stressed are you about your workers? The most stressed, the most. We did a, you know, an employee um, fund where we raised a significant amount of money, close to $20,000, which is good. But, you know, you divide that amongst three restaurants with people that have significant needs and it gets really, you know, thin very quickly. So, we, um, we saved that fund. Um, knowing restaurant workers like I know them, they will go through money when they go through money and then they'll need money on the other end. What we wanted to do is, you know, hold some of the funds back until things got a little harder when it wasn't just like, oh, I have all this cash in my pocket and I'm going to go do X, like almost forcing them to be able to use the funds that we were going to give them in a way that would help move their lives along. Can we talk about the future a little bit? Last night, uh, I I spoke to the pollster who'd done a poll that GBH and The Globe and Suffolk had done. And one of the questions was, uh, when are you going to be willing to go to a restaurant? And it broke it down into three categories. The first was when it's allowed, whenever that is. Only 42 percent said yes. And ultimately, it didn't get to 86 percent until there was a vaccine. And as we discussed earlier in the show, who knows, early next year, middle of next year, whatever. Uh, uh, how do you exist in an environment where even when you are able to open, not only do you have to limit the number of customers, but the customers themselves seem to be prepared to limit their restaurant going? Right. Even with the vaccine, we're still only at 86%. Right, that's right, right. Not solvency, right? So then you back it up from there and it becomes really daunting and frustrating. Um, you don't. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we've run a thousand different ideas and models. And, you know, do you have people sit super far apart? I mean, you can come get my food ultimately, not now, but you will be able to and have it at home. You can have that experience at home. What you come to restaurants for is the conviviality and the experience. And Absolutely. The, the gathering of people and quite frankly, in it, in some sort of closeness, you know, like, and restaurants are not, even if we open at 25, 50%, the model doesn't work unless we're at 60, 70% of capacity financially. But if we can't have people at our bars, if we can't have bars at full capacity, it doesn't work. And also, can you imagine what's the restaurant experience when you come in and we're at 25% capacity, you can't stand in a bar with someone, you can't really say hi to someone, and then their server comes up to you in a mask. What is that like? And what does that do to like the psychological impact of what a restaurant ultimately does, which is makes people feel good? 
So I, in light of that statement, I hesitate to ask the question, but you invite it. Is there a chance that all of your operations won't reopen? I don't think anyone knows for sure that there, I don't think there's one person that is 100% sure that any or all of their operations will come back in full swing. I don't know. We have no, like, wh- how long does this go? And if we open back up and people get really sick again, that all of that trepidation that you, you just, you know, gave to us in the poll, that's going to get worse. So are you we- able to take even a minute of joy out of this James Beard thing or you read it and you move on? I'm grateful for it. Please let me know. Like, let me be very clear. I'm grateful to be nominated and to be in such incredible company. I mean, at one point when they were announcing it, <laughs> they did a really nice production. It was great. And then there were like multiple board members on a Zoom. And it was like, ah, like, what is this? why are we living this life? Um, so it's, I'm really grateful. It's also just a really weird time. I think there's a lot of people that are nominated for restaurants that ultimately won't exist. Won't exist. It's horrible to say. I hope more do than we fear. Tiffany, good luck and congratulations. It's great to see you. You take care, Jim. Tiffany Faison.